I deliberately did not upload them. Yeah, there should be something that people that registered would benefit from those that did not register. So that's the thing. So we've done, um, like I was saying, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sidika Falami, your fashion business trainer and coach, helping you start and grow your fashion business so that you can um, actually excel, you know, scale and all that. Say that. Thank you for joining. At least so far, you're still the only person so far that has told me you're a starter, and I'm really glad at that. You see, don't ignore anything here because it looks like most of these things are not bringing profits for now. But I can tell you, if you go into business after 10 years, you will come back to do most of these things you will come back and do it. And like I was saying before you joined, um, the vision and values were so broad, I could not contain it in one slide. So I had to separate it for the paid class. But you know what? I simplified everything in the, in the um, okay, you can even see it on my screen. That's the FPH value and vision. Then I did uh, the goals, then the business purpose. I've already started uh, most of those things. So the, the, there are examples. So I gave enough examples that are going to really help you to be able to do most of these things. Yes, they come with notes, but they are very short, so you'll be able to come up with it. And these are most of the things that you will need on your website, on your social media pages. You will need them to communicate them, even on your WhatsApp profile. So all those things are what you need to, to do, obviously, because when you start communicating with people that are high, um, these are the things that they will communicate. They don't need your long story these are the short short things that they are going to be communicating so you'll be able to get all the statements and when you're writing your business profile you'll be able to um arrange them in the proper order so today we are talking about growth so um growth simply is when something is increasing we all understand that so Growth can be experienced in different um, form, personal growth, business growth. So I said here, personal growth refers to the process of self-improvement and development over time. It involves expanding your knowledge, skills, abilities, as well as developing your emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-confidence, you know, everything personal. So when we're talking about personal growth, you still have to take a little look at the mass flow hierarchy of me. You know, like I told you, most of these things that I'm teaching, they work together. They, they, they are related, you know, they work together. So it's not like uh, you have to put everything in your head. It's just that as we move on, some topics will make you understand the broader topics. Just like um, this month, now we have vision, values, goals, business, purpose, growth, and everything. At the end of the day, everything still falls under vision. So to just help you understand that this is your vision statement that is like five lines. When they ask you a question on that, that, what kind of growth are you planning? You'll be able to answer fantastic without blinking. You understand? So... That's how it is. Then your business growth refers to the process of expanding a company size, revenue, market share, and profitability over time. It involves increasing sales, acquiring new customers, expanding into new markets, and developing new products. Don't worry, I'm not going to be reading the slides to you. <laughs> but then, so um, growth is often considered a key for business. Now, I remember, was it 2016 or 2017? Someone came to me and she was asking me about growth. I told her, I said, when your business, no, she was asking me about expansion. And I told her, when, when you get to the time that your business needs expansion, 
You don't need anybody to tell you. You will know. The signs will show. Everything will show clearly. You will understand that, oh, I need expansion now. I need to grow my business now. So, excuse me. So, um, it is very important, you know. So, I told her because there are different signs that you will see as your business grew, as you yourself grew. There are certain ex expectations that you will start experiencing. One, then there are, um, let me see, what again used to happen when it comes to that group? Um, there are things that people, aside the expect, expectation, you will experience some kind of inconvenience within you or within your business that will let you know that you need to expand in this place, you need to improve in this place. So, like I said, growth is often considered as a key goal for business as it can lead to increased profit, improved brand recognition, and a stronger competitive pos uh, position in the market. However, achieving sustainable growth requires careful planning, strategic decision-making, and a willingness to adapt to changing marketing con market condition. Like I told you, there will be some kind of discomfort that will make you know that, no, this shell, like um, uh, the, the chicken egg, when it's about to hatch, you know, when it's growing, when then it gets to that point that it ha the, the egg shell can no longer contain it and it has to break to have its freedom of moving and growing, you understand? So welcome. So there are several ways a business can achieve growth. So they are like increasing sales. So when you see that your business is increasing in sales, like you sell one now, then it's growing to five, then something is growing. Then you're expanding into new markets. You, you realize that, um, like someone will tell me that there's nothing called multiple stream of income for a poor person, that you may just be multitasking. But when you get to certain stage that you know that, okay, this business is sustainable enough on its own, then you know that, okay, I can put the fund from my, um, from this, my career into this other business, fund it, then, okay, I've started sewing clothes. Oh, I've grown to the extent that my customers uh, are no longer enough for me. Let me start ready to wear. So you notice that you want to expand, then you develop new channels as well for selling and improving your operation. So there are different ways by which you understand that. Don't worry, our class today is very, 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 very short. So by which you understand that your business is actually growing. So also, when you realize that you have to develop new products and services to suit people, it's also a sign that you are growing. And then strategic partnerships and acquisition. Like I told you now, this year, I'm doing more of bringing people on board. I was still talking to um, the first person to join the class today that, okay, this your idea that you shared with me. You can always come and let's see how we can work together. So when you know that, oh my God, this my 24 hours is no longer convenient for me. I need to expand is a sign of growth. I need to bring in an assistant. I need to employ this person. I need to, it's a sign of growth. So it is very important that you watch your growth pattern. And there's something I always tell my people when it comes to growth, please, growth is important. Don't, um, don't look down on growth. Like, don't even think it's not, it's not important, sorry. It's very, very important. So, I used to do something for myself every two years. Like every two years, I do something for myself. I, I look at what I'm doing and I check like, where do I need improvement? Because <clears throat> I was teaching Start and Grow Your Fashion Business last year. 
I'm still teaching something related to start and grow a fashion business, but you will notice that they are absolutely different. This is more analyzed, broken down, more things are joining. It is important because when you stay in one place over time, you lose relevance. People will think that's just it. And some of your growth make it visible. Make it visible so that people will know you are growing. Please, it is very important. It's, it's really help you to even have your respect. So when I started in my small room, after a little while, welcome, thank you for joining. After a little while, I built a small kiosk and I was working from there. After a little while, I rented a bigger space. I rented another space. Then after a while, I rented a bigger space. And now I'm still expanding because one thing that I see that this thing does to even me, like let's bring it home. One thing that growth does is that it lets your, your customers to see you different. And it will even help you to increase your prices for those that want to really increase their prices or change your strategies or change your uh, um, uh, mode of operation. It's very important. So let's say um, I'm using just, I have, I have a counter like this small kiosk that I use to sell fabrics this year. So while using that counter, there are certain people that will not stand in front of you unless if they get to the point whereby maybe they were choked or they have a deadline and they need an urgent mm -hmm. fabric. I mean, an urgent fabric, then they come to you. And you're targeting them too. So they wait. The moment they see you upgrade to a proper kiosk, then they look like, okay, I can manage. Then some also still will not come. And part of your former customers that look down on you or that did not want to pay you before, when they see what you started doing, they, they, they see those changes, they begin to have a change in their mind. So you are selling your fabrics then at 5,000 Naira when you were just using a counter or a table. Then you move to the kiosk and you're selling 7,000 Naira. Some we understand that ah, she has changed you. After all, if we go to the market, they will sell it expensive than what um, she's giving us. Let's just take it at that 7,000. Then you expand it to a shop. Then before you know it, you have a plaza. Let's say even when you get to the plaza, your prices may come down because you are now doing wholesales. It still means that people will not come to you with small money. So make some of your growth visible. It gives you respect among your uh, uh, people, your customers. So I always do this thing. I take account every time I take account of my growth process. Like, okay, Madam Esther is in the room. We met last year. Today we are meeting again. Ha, what, what can I add that will make us see that, okay, what I taught them last year is different from what I'm bringing to this year. So she's already seen that, oh, these slides are different from what we did last year. It is something about it. Let people see that some changes are coming. So that's just an advice that is not on my slide. It gives it gives me respect so much because there is a way. Anytime I promote my growth, there is a there, there are certain comments that I get from my customers. They'll be like, "Ha, ah, Auntie Buki, please. Oh, I hope you have our time. This one now that we know that you are saying for all these and top top people. Please, oh, remember us. You know." They may even say it jokingly, but the fact is, it is a feedback, a good feedback that I need to understand that people are perceiving my growth. 
the customers that were paying me 3,000 Naira uh, in 2009, 10, I still have some of them paying 35,000 Naira for the same kind of service this year. And those are evidence of growth. Because when you are growing and it is visible to people that you are growing, they are, your customers are also sensible. They, they, they can see, they can perceive. You understand, they have a perception of because you've grown to this part, definitely they should not see you as before. Then your growth, you don't know that some of your customers also have the plans to patronize someone that is growing towards where you're growing to. So when I change from um, bespoke to bulk production, I had some of my customers that moved from just being my bespoke customers to my bulk production. Now again, that I slow down in my services, there is something else that I'm growing into that will be unveiled anytime soon. You understand? So like I had a major customer, suddenly she was just like, oh, you do top party production. That's fantastic. My brand is starting. This is this, I'm interested in selling clothes, blah, blah, blah. And we kicked off. It was a major turnaround in my business at that point. Like one customer, servicing one customer with massive, order it wasn't easy at all i had no choice i had to employ anybody employable because the deadlines were always short and you know it's outside the country so i have to meet the deadline of the day that those um, items need to leave you can just imagine i was just employing anybody whether you're professional, non-professional, I was just bringing. And you see, when our own time came, she, when other customers saw this growth, it also helped me to be able to increase my price because there was no time. There was no time. So I cannot wait for who will bring something cheaper also. So I had to uh, uh, increase my, my prices. So you see, growth, making your growth evident for people to see helps you to be able to even grow your income, grow your uh, personality, grow your relevance. So I said personal growth. So now we're talking about personal growth because your business is still you. We are talking with, I'm, I'm talking to SMEs and most of us are, the front of our businesses. The business starts with us most times. So as a small business owner, your personal growth is very important because at a point, people are no longer patronizing your product or your service. They are patronizing you, your personality, this important person, this beautiful person, this knowledgeable person, this intelligent person, this fast person. So like I told you, growth, personal growth has a lot to do with Maslow hierarchy of need. So those that did the paid class, you can go back and see those steps, those things that you set for yourself at your transcendence and all that, then you'll be able to understand um, your plans towards the kind of growth that you need to work on. So by continuously striving to improve ourselves, we can become more resilient, adaptable, and capable of achieving our goals and living a fulfilling life. So there are ways, these are ways to, to achieve your personal growth. That's pursuing education. There are some of us that need to improve in our education. See, forget whether you are in uh, fashion or not. Don't worry, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a program about um, this aspect. There are lots of things. And thank God, hey, Madam Esther is even in the room today. Uh, two weeks ago, she shared something with me 
a very important um, document with me. And I told her, I said, thank you for sharing. Even though I did not have immediate solution, I told her, you are just telling me that what I am doing is important. Because when she shared this opportunity with me, most of the things that I'm telling us now that we should work on are the hindrances that will stop many people there. So all these things, as much as it looks like, eh, am I right, say personal growth and all that, will it take me anywhere? When the time comes, you will understand because by then you no longer need to crack your brain. It's already there. So pursuing education, this involves learning new skills and knowledge through formal or informal education or self-directing, directed learning. This is a very important opportunity that I told you she, in fact, that conversation I had with her made me go and make inquiries about a training in that aspect. So that the next time somebody comes with me with that kind of request, I can answer. You understand? So pursuing education, then seeking feedback, Feedbacks, when it comes to feedback, I, I will tell you something. Um, feedbacks are good, but then you need to improve your emotional intelligence very well so that you can understand feedback. Then there are some feedbacks that comes maybe when you are not expecting it. So it looks like, um, what's this person saying? But as time goes on, you'll be able to understand. So taking feedback, uh, you should be able to know how to analyze feedback so that you not misunderstand it. I've been a victim of such that I misunderstood the feedback. But at the end of the day, I used it. You understand. The reason why I misunderstood that feedback was because of an initial experience. But when I sat down, analyzed it very well, I realized that the feedback is a constructive one, except it came at the wrong time. So don't throw away feedback. Then know the kind of people you're getting feedbacks from. Some people actually want your growth. Some, maybe they're just like, what's wrong with this person? Then also you need to know what you want because feedback can be in form of why most of us are in fashion business. And the feedback we got from family and friends is you can never make it in this business. But then if you had listened to those feedbacks and stayed back, you may not be the employer or the successful fashion trainer that you are today. So setting goals, you know, um, when, when you set growth goals and then you ensure that you are working towards it is also something that can help you with your personal growth. So refer back to the previous class on um, goals and check out um, those personal, the breakdown. In fact, that class, I deliberately gave 70% of the class out in that class, yeah because it's very important that people understand it. So setting goals involves identifying specific measurable goals that you want to achieve and working towards them systematically. So you need to understand that, okay, if I, before you start all this good thing, who are you, where do you want to go? You understand what exactly, like when I was doing the vision slide, what exactly do you want to achieve in life? These are the things that will help you understand that growing yourself in this aspect is important. So you want to be the number one fashion, uh, fashion, I mean, tailoring trainer, and you have just basic knowledge. At a point when you stop having people that need basic knowledge, what else are you going to do? And staying relevant is very important in our personal development. Then practicing self-reflection. Okay, you've grown. You to give yourself feedback. What have you seen 
in your growth? What is the next step? Okay, who are the people you look up to? What are, what are the things you need to get to where these people are? Oh, you want to be like the famous um, ready-to-wear brand globally. What does this famous ready-to-wear brand has? What are the things this global brand um, is doing? How can you achieve it? You read about them, read their history, check out their strategy. Which one can you adopt? Which one can you um, substitute? Or which one can you um, kind of emulate? or even be able to create your own strategy from there. So this involves reflecting on your thoughts, behavior, and experiences in order to gain insight into your strengths and weaknesses. So you can see that SWOT analysis still finds its way into your personal group. Then developing healthy habits. Thank God, last month we did habits. For the paid class, we extensively did habits. So when you check the values and the habits classes, even the free class, you'll be able to develop healthy habits because healthy habits can also portray you as someone that is growing. This involves adopting habits that support your physical and mental well-being, such as regular exercise, healthy eating, good sleep, you know, Different, even successful habits, different habits. I've broken that habit, so there's no point dwelling on this um, part so much. So, um, for your so um, the steps towards achieving the growth, the business growth, or even your personal growth, define your goal objectives. When you know, I mean, your growth objectives. When you know where you are going to, see, there are too much noise out there. Too much. So much noise out there. Please, before you can go online and do all of these things, know where you are going to. Something happened on Saturday where, when I was at the event I went to. So this lady saw me that um, at that hangout, Apparently, we had about 12 speakers, but I picked interest in three. So she was sitting beside me. We were doing my eyebrow then. So she was sitting beside me when the person that said she sells other people's products was talking. And I said, oh, I'm interested in talking to her afterwards. Then I went to another then the, the person talking about the one uh, Madame Esther shared with me, when she got talking to her, I said, oh, fantastic. I'm interested in speaking to that woman. Then there was this lady selling um, herbal mixture. And there is something I need the herbal mixture for, for my health. So I got the lady we were talking. And then there is this... Um, financial plan. In fact, that's the number one. That one I'm going to be introducing it to everybody. You get an email with that introduction. So I'm going to um, talk about that. That also, she was not like, and she was a speaker too. She spoke about um, imposter syndrome. And you know, because she does not know who I am or the motive behind having interest in this, this, and this, she thought I was just excited, like someone that is not, that does not know what she wants. So she was like, what do you want? I was just laughing. I said, I, what I want, you can see how personal I talk to the people that own what I want. You see, these other two people that I showed interest in what they are selling, I influence a large number of people. And this large number of people will come to me for such solutions. I need to understand how these people can be beneficial to my people. So she was coming from the point of, um, 
I am someone that does not know what I want in life before I now let her understand that no. I also, because she has spoken, I understand where she's coming from. That, okay, you're talking about imposter syndrome. So I get where she's coming from. So I have to do that. Now, why did I do that? You see, there has been a time in my life whereby I failed because of such compliments. Someone telling me not to do it my way. And I failed. And it was so bad. It was depressing. It affected me seriously. And so this time around, I'm not ready to allow anybody to put me in that corner again. In fact, I had to control myself <clears throat> to be able to communicate clearly. So you see where in the first slide, the slide before this one, where I talked about feedback, that is a feedback. But this time around, it's a feedback that I knew was not needed. And I appreciated her for saying it. Then, because I knew where I was going to, that feedback did not affect me. Or rather, the 12 um, speakers did not entirely attract me, except the four that I need. So you need to define your growth objective. You need to define that growth that you want for your business and for yourself because it will help you to be focused. It will help you not to swerve here, swerve here. So this person is selling this course, you run. That one is selling, you run. This one is selling, you run. No, it will help you to be focused on where exactly you are going to. So this is something I want you to know. Define what you want. Know where you are going to. Knowing where you are going to is going to help you to be able to focus. Then analyze your market and competition in the aspect of business. Analyze your um Analyze your market and competition. It's very important because it will let you know where you are going towards. So fashion industry is saturated, but as saturated as it is, there are plenty of opportunities. I, I've been using Madame Esther's um, case as, um, as, as a case study ever since we started. That is the business idea for somebody entirely, for fashion entrepreneurs, entirely. Just find relevance and show that you are putting this thing out there in a way that fashion entrepreneurs will be able to understand it and know the benefits. After all, it is not what makes us human. Everything we want always is not just to sit on the same machine. We have other things and we want somebody that can tailor these solutions to us in our industry. So analyze your market and your competition. Everybody is suing boo-boo. Let me do trouser for a change. Everybody is selling bikini. Let me sell um, um, t-shirts for a change. Analyze them, know where they're going to. It will help you know where you can grow. Then develop a growth strategy. There was a time I was talking about meeting one important woman like that in the society. And when I was marketing, I now explained the, the things I was doing. So I was actually marketing a different product. Unknown to most people there, I'm actually targeting somebody. So they were now asking me, ah, how are you going to do it? This one you're targeting someone else. I said, don't worry. When I 
sell this market to this person. When this person gets satisfied, I'm going to be able to talk to this other woman. And that was how I walked my way towards it. It's so also when it comes to growth strategy, you know where you're going to. And you know, most times why they call it strategies because it is not a straight route. It's not always a straight route. You want to get your PhD. You are not going direct to PhD. You need to get your BSc. You need to get your MBA. You need to, you know, you need to get different qualifications before you now get to that final group that you desire. So know all these steps. In the paid class, I, I further break it down. Different types of um, growths. Uh, let me, let me, let me take a glance through. Don't worry, you will see it. <laughs> you will see it. So there are different, different types of um, growths that have analyzed different stages of growth, different, um, uh, yeah, I've forgotten that English that I used to write it. You understand? So all those parts that will help you. And it's very important that you know all of these things. Then implement your growth strategy, action. Everything, action. I told you this training is not supposed to start but I had to start it. Because when you don't open one door, you may not be able to see the next door. Start. You know that first step. Please take it. It may be difficult. It may not be pleasant. Take it. See, growth can be challenging, but when you get to your destination, it is gorgeous. Like, relaxing, suiting, fitting. But then you have to take that bold step towards it. Is your growth about educating yourself, improving your skills, joining organizations? Part of my own growth plan now is to belong to some organizations. At least two now, over the weekend, I was already talking. These are people that when they do their advert, I cannot pay your registration, Dari. I don't have time. But now they are becoming priorities. It is not always convenient. But when the benefit starts coming, it is very, very good. So monitor and adjust your strategy. So this is just like what feedback can do as well. Your check your milestone. What did it you achieve? How are you going to work? Okay, this is my, my growth plan. I'm planning to improve my production from 10 to 100 every month. So what happened? The strategy we planned this month was that I'm going to wake up 2 a.m. So to 10, 10 p.m. Then along the line, my kids were disturbing. You understand then? I, I checked and I realized that, okay, this is why I did not achieve it. Or, okay, I achieved it, but I eventually landed in the hospital. And how do I avoid it? Then I start planning. Okay, next month, I need to find an assistant. Then the kids, I need to engage them. Then you understand. You start coming up when you monitor, adjust it, plan well, then it becomes... Um, successful, then invest in your people and culture, invest in your people. Um, there's this quote, I lost it now, but I'll find it, that said, a CEO told a CFO that all the people we are training after employment are leaving. Then the, I think, is it the CEO or the CFO now responded that what if we did not train them and they did not go? And it makes a lot of sense. You're training them and they are going. What you don't know is that at that point that you are training them, give them tasks that will let them be relevant. Our industry is dominated with coming and going develop a strategy that will let you enjoy them while they are there. 
while you are developing a strategy to retain them. So someone comes into your company, the person does not know how to pack Jack. And you are there spending six months training that person how to chat, uh, talk. No. Let the person be useful to you. You're training the person how to talk. You're giving the person the tax to talk. And you're ensuring the person meets deadlines. By the time that person leaves, you will not really feel it. Because you might even be able to get the next person. Or by then, that person would have been productive enough to give back the, the amount of money you've paid for that person in full. Then on the hand of not investing in them or not training them or not improving them, one thing is when you don't improve them, they are just irrelevant. It happens even around me. They cannot function for anything. They are not useful for anything. They are just there to keep your company. They are not productive. They are not benefiting the company. Then the day you find someone useful, you will even find them useless. Then investing in your people can even help you retain them. It can be a form of retention. And then it can help your growth. So you have the staff that you take care of his welfare, you ensure is growing, you let them have basic opportunities for their own growth. And this person is so comfortable being around you. They've tried to get another job elsewhere. They did not get um, anyone that is suited. That person is there. By the time new people start coming, that person can eventually be the trainer. And then you will be able to have an, more time to focus on other things. You understand them, maintain a customer centric focus. After all, why are you in business? You are in business because of your customers. So when you are growing, have your customers in mind that, okay, I'm growing because of this business. My customers, okay, when I even started, I'm glad when I, when I started, I've told you how my growth is affecting my customers positively. So you need to make it customer centric as well. You understand. So what's this your growth plan? How will it carry your customers along? Where are the customers going? You know, in business, you just understand your target audience and then be able to um, um, direct your growth towards where you'll be able to retain them or be able to get a new customer. So this is our last slide. I've told you it's a very short class. Business and personal growth. Both business growth and personal growth are important for achieving success and in fulfillment in life. Oh, sorry. One is, the one on the left side is for personal, while the one on the um, right hand side is for um, business. So the, these are a few importance of growth. When you're growing personally, you start being aware of yourself. So for example, I'm this kind of person that after I eat it, I pick my mouth, I build, I sneak out of trash. I use my nose to clean, my hand to clean my nose. My, you understand? Then I started understanding growth. Like I started on um, growing somehow that my influence is increasing or my network is increasing. Then on the first day that I went into a public gathering of 100 people that are already doing great things, then I'm there because so I'm there with my bad habits. Then I noticed how the lady sits gently. I do learn etiquette too. <laughs> so it's put their bags beside them, get their handkerchief, lay it on their legs, get their cutleries and all that, you know, and 
somehow, because I'm at that point that I'm growing and I'm conscious of that growth, I will take notes. Growth will help you to be aware of the negative things that you do. Okay, in the in the uh, in the paid class for value, there are some things I wrote about negative right? That's what is coming to my mind now. So it will help you. You'll be aware. As you grow, you're like, oh, this is the state of the art machine that people are using now. Ah, what if these customers in my areas are not patronizing me because I don't have such thing? You understand? So this can help you also to be able to grow well because the more you grow, the more you become aware of yourself. Then um, personal growth also help to improve your confidence and resilience. So for someone that has been growing um, themselves, sorry. For someone that has been growing themselves very well personally, you, okay, what did I tell you I displayed over the weekend? That is confidence. That is confidence. Because I've read and understood where she was coming from. I did not even tell her I trained anything about imposter syndrome. Maybe I'm a coach. I did not even mention it. I was just able to preach what I'm doing. That is what personal growth does to you. Let me use a tailor as an uh, example, what I tell tailors. So when you just start learning the skills of tailoring, while you are learning, when you start on your own, there are some certain fears that you start getting like, ha, ah, this neck, I hope it's not too wide. Then you've made your mistake first time, you've made it second time, you've gone on YouTube, you've practiced, you've gone for other classes and all that. Then you notice by the second and third year, when people come to you and tell you, Ha, huh, I want this neck. You can relax and tell them, oh, the neck, don't worry, you get it. Because you've improved your skills to the extent that you know you can deliver. Then it helps with resilience. As you grow, as you become aware, you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know that this inconvenience that I'm putting myself through to grow is going to be beautiful at the end of the day. So you endure, just like when we are growing as, ch uh, uh, as children, you know? You like those beautiful shoes as your leg begins to grow. You've forgotten that some of us, when we are get, um, increasing our height, we tend to have fever. Or even at that, our parents, or even parents among us, you have to take the kids to the clinic, you take care of them and all that. And when these children are grown up, you're like, wow, is this my handwork? You may even forget all the, the uh, problems or challenges that you faced growing up. That's a typical example for resilience. Parents go through a lot of discomfort to train their children at the end, they reap or they see them excelling. It's not all the children that you train that you expect to come and give back to you. Some is just that joy of seeing them um, grow. Then improved relationships. You will be able to get much more improved relationships. People will like to mingle with you. People will like to mingle with you. See, when you are nobody, like forget money wise, like you're not making any visible impact and all that, nobody will want to call you. But the moment they start realizing your growth, your confidence, everything, wow, this person, you now have a car, you have this beautiful house on the streets, you're doing this program, 
then you start seeing your phone buzzing, people calling you, people wanting to mingle with you. It improves relationships. Those that I, I tell people that the best way when they come there, eh, this person and eh, she looked down on me and eh, she said I will never no 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 no. You want to prove that person wrong, be a better version of yourself, improve yourself, increase your knowledge, increase everywhere that, that is necessary for you to increase and improve. And then you'll be surprised at the way those kind of people will now be the one to sing your song. When I moved into Lagos, started my business, I did not market in Ibadan. My first visit to Ibadan on the streets, people were telling me what I'm doing in Lagos. They're like, ah, you think we don't know? Ah, you this top tailor in Lagos. They, that's it. They will sing the song. And that's why I'm not party to those that say, uh, this person looked down on me. Then let me tell you, the person that they insulted, the person that they lashed on, the person that they, they, they looked down on, is different from the you. That was what they saw. And that is the person that they were angry with. The moment you change, they become your cheerleaders. They are proud of you and they start telling people, oh, I want you see such a person's business. He has three branches now. They will be surprised that this is the person that said, uh, you cannot do something good. That was then. Maybe you are still cooking everything, planning out, but they saw you like somebody that is idle. But the moment they see it visible, visible growth, like I tell you, the narrative will change. Then greater fulfillment and happiness. When you get, when you hit a growth milestone, there's no how you will not be fulfilled. How oh, this is my award, award of excellence, because I did this great thing. There is no how you will not be glad, you'll be happy, you tick that from your checklist and then you move on. Then it increases productivity and success because you are growing. Somehow you will be succeeding in different aspects where that growth is relevant. Remember, you need to know, what, you need to define your objectives because that is what will let you know that it is success. So if your objective is towards your business and the growth that you are planning is towards um, gisting on the street, you will not be able to record success of business. You will record the champion of gossips. Maybe there also you can become a competitor of the likes of Gist Lover, Insta Blog. So in business, um, increased revenue and profitability. So growth help you increase your revenue and profitability. I didn't even remember that I wrote this when I was using that example of how my visible growth has helped me increase my income. So in fact, my price. So there was a time, I'm going to recreate that office. Now I don't have that space anymore due to medical condition anyway. So, um, I had this office. So anytime I want to charge customers, <laughs> like I want to change their price, <clears throat> I take them to that office. The moment you sit down, the ambience, everything, <laughs> and I tell you, you know, your minimum price there is 20,000 there. They don't argue with you. I'm telling you. Because they see me different. So it helps you to increase your revenue and profitability because that is even a, a, a personal way. And um, this is then also growth in products and services. When you are growing, expanding into markets, your profits are increasing, your revenue are increasing. And you're, you know, you're, you are just breaking boundaries. Then improved markets position. So it will help you in your positioning, the way people will see you, the way the, 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 your relevance in the market space, your market share, it will help you 
to be able to improve. Then greater innovation. Your growth will help you to even come up with other ideas or to know what next to bring in. So let's say you are serving, servicing two customers before. Then now your customers have increased to 20. So it has, it has make you know that, okay, you need to bring in more skilled staff. You need to buy uh, machines that will help you, um, <clears throat> that will help you increase your productivity. It will help you also know that, oh, you need to come up with fresh ideas to retain your customers and also to be relevant in the market. There are more job opportunities. It, more job opportunities in two ways. More job opportunities for you and more job opportunities in your company. Because job in the sense that, let, let, let's say, uh, more business opportunities, more contracts, more collaborations, you understand. That's what growth we see because when they see that, it will even help you to be able to market. Let's say now you have the space, you notice that a lot of fashion entrepreneurs in your neighborhood need some certain machines that they cannot buy. But you have the fund, you can, you can spend 20 million naira to buy some uh, machines. Then you just get those machines and you open it up for them that, okay, you can come and use it for a token. So you are creating more opportunities for yourself. Then improve stakeholder value. Who are your stakeholders? Oh, sorry. It's in the, in the value. <laughs> Is it value or goals? I've, I've written about stakeholders. Your stakeholders are your customers, your suppliers, your, um, let me see. Uh, your partners, your collaborators, your employees, you know, it's improve your value to them. So when my business was growing and uh, I, I started buying much more products from certain customers, there is a way they treat you when you get there. They'll be like, ah, I don't see, eh, eh. ah, see that, see that, see that. How many do you want? Ah, you shouldn't have stressed yourself. And we deliver because they know that you are buying plenty. Ah, my lining people, when I get there now, even up to now, when I want to buy lining, they are anti sit down, sit down. Ah, you want fun? Yeah, I think fun. Ah, please bring cold water. Ah, bring ice water. Bring, you know, things like that. They treat you with more respect because they know that you are bringing value. Your growth is also bringing value. Then your employees also, you were paying 10,000 Naira before. Then this growth started coming and your employee realized that, ah, if we work hard very well, Oga can increase our salary to 50,000 Naira. If you are the honest type, they understand that when they work more, you pay them more. Then they know that, ah, I have to work more so that I can go home with 10,000, 10,000. 2015, 2015, yes, I had this employee. Then she was on commission. If I go to a stage, I'm like, Auntie, you are any more than me. You. you know, she's always targeting what she will take home mounted. And there was a point I suspected that she was looking for another job there because I can be strict to an extent. I suspected that she was actually looking for a job. And then she, she went for that interview, she came back, she confessed later. So apparently they were to pay her 40,000 Naira and the 40,000 Naira she's going to cut and sue. Whereas in my place, she earned up to 60,000 Naira or more, more or less is commission. <clears throat> and she doesn't cut. All she does is sewing. So she weighed her option that, ah, 40,000 Naira, I will still be the one to go through all the stress. But 60,000 Naira, I don't need to worry about the customers. No fight. They will still correct me and all that. And she stayed. It was when my business model changed that she left. 
and she left because she did not understand my proposal. By the time she came back, that she wants to continue, I was enjoying my money. <laughs> you know, I've employed lower skilled um, tailors for that particular production, and I don't need that anymore. So I was paying like um, three people with just a salary. You understand? So it was, we moved from bespoke to bulk production. I know how bulk production can be. So it's just, yeah. You go and cut line, cut line, cut line, cut line. Okay, you go and M, 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 M. Okay, you tap, 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 tap. You know, so those were the things that I needed then. But if she had still been with me, I'll be paying more than that per piece. So that was how it happened. So it will improve your value with everyone, both all of your stakeholders, your staff, your customers, your um your suppliers, like I've told you, and even to yourself, you will see the value. So that is the end of uh, the free classes, the free, um, free modules for March. So now is for the paid classes. The paid classes are out. <laughs> Expo, like on value, you can see it at the top of my screen. I've given you like, I think I used four slides to give you an example. I gave different examples that you'll be able to um, choose from, you understand. Excuse me, I apologize for that. So I gave, Plenty of examples that you'll be able to choose from. I gave um, uh, um, on vision. Oh, vision is vision was further broken down into three. I think I only broke it down into one. I can't remember. So it was further broken down into three. I mean, sorry, value. It was further broken down into three, and there are examples for the entire tree. Forget the slide that, I'm, that in fact, no part of it is even in that. They are entirely different, like I told you. So that's one that I shared for everybody present in class. Is just going to guide you. That's like a starter to be able to come into the value. Like I told you, most of the things that we are teaching this month is for your visibility. It's for you to articulate your messages properly to your customers, your value statement, vision statement, mission statement, purpose statement, uh, value proposition, everything broken down properly for you to be able to do it. And <clears throat> one thing that I want to tell you is once you've done it once, you don't have to go through all those hazards of starting again. All you need to is to always edit it, improve it, improve it. Just like my slides. My slides are just always changing. So, you know, um, it's just for me to, okay, I'm readjusting my value statement. Okay, my value proposition now for Rainbow Fashion Africa, I've just been able to use your own slides to curate value statements for my alteration service. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. It's only Oreba Fashion Africa that has, sorry, value proposition. But now there is a value proposition for uh, my alteration service. Sorry, my, my dressmaking, my alteration does now. So I'm now bringing it as one. So by the time you read all those examples, come on, you'll be able to, you know, those in my VIP category, you now come back to me. Just give me the assignment, I will work it out. You just give me all your keywords and I'm going to curate something fantastic for you. I think I did that for somebody here last week. She is one of my special. <laughs> so when we're done with vision, the reason why I gave her that privilege was because she was the only one that, I didn't, I didn't really give it as an assignment, but she did the assignment and she gave, she submitted. So when she submitted, I'm like, no, this is an outstanding thing. 
okay and i have to also do i just told her give me time by tomorrow i'll deal with it because you know last week i was having um flu so i had to treat myself so the following morning i sat down picked our keywords i gave her three options or two options and she chose it's not necessary that she has to use what i what i gave her but somehow what i gave her will make her be able to um create something fantastic so the same thing with value vision for those in my vip class they're just going to give me all of their keywords then we are going to work out we're going to discuss we're going to i'm going to ask them questions we are going to even do some form of SWOT analysis on all those things some form of jewelry window when it comes to the value so when they do that that's just for the vip people when they do that they will be able to do it there to to those values will stick like i told you how i came about being realistic and how knowing that i'm a very realistic person has helped me to be a better coach it helped mostly in my coaching someone was with me on on yesterday i spent like two hours almost two hours with that lady this is about women issues you understand and you know it got to a point she was crying i told her there is no tears what you want to hear i'm not going to tell you this is the fact this is the step and this is what to do you know what talk to your people get back to me then we'll be able to we'll be able to come up with a solution so what i'm going to do before she make her payment now is i'm going to give her a summary she only paid for um conversation for yesterday that one is i think it's just five thousand naira. So she only paid for um, that conversation, but it took more than 30 minutes. She was the only one yesterday. Anyway. So I'm going to give her a summary of what she's going to do, then a brief intro of what I'm doing with her. So when she's done making her first payment, then I'm going to expand what we are going to do. And I've told her, I'm going to give me one year to work on you because the solution to your challenge is you first the people second and the stakeholders third you understand so that is the difference between um when someone is on a vip call and just the general call so on that one it is usually customized one-on-one -on -one. we tailor it down to the main problem that you are facing yeah i have my vip one of my vip people on this call now so don't worry, this slide is different from the paid class only. <laughs> it's very, very different. Just the little, that one is like, it's in, yeah. So that's all for today. Questions, feedback, recommendations. Um, who is talking to me? Madam Esther, so good to see you today. I'm so happy to see you. So the only thing now is the Q&A session that I'm going to be doing live on Instagram. That's all. Then we move to our paid class. You said, I didn't, I didn't get that. Good morning, ma'am. So good, good to morning. hear from you. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to hear from you. Um, mm -hmm. anytime we come for sessions like this, there's always this reassurance of the fact that yeah. um, whatever it is that you have decided to, whatever course you have decided to envision and work with or work on about not only our, our, our lives as creatives, but other aspects of our lives that they are, they are, yeah. they are valid. Yeah, very, very. So far, you they are so 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 valid mm -hmm. and um cannot uh, underestimate this issue of personal development the truth is that some people for me my personal experiences some people just want to see if this person is really growing before they yeah. can entrust, entrust their code to you wow. at the end of it they might they might just say 
they might even give you like businesses what you know a whole lot just because of the way they have seen you grown over time and the way they speak out about you you yourself will be like ah, ah, shimotele, right? you understand <laughs> like, you know but the thing is it, you're, you're great personally for yourself and but your business too cannot be left out as we grow in this personal development journey our business will be cool for it like our business will be the one that is benefiting from it majorly yes. it's really bless our business it's really be a part of it and then people start talking about even what you have not done self they will tell you don't worry i'm just professionalizing because i know you can do it if you can be able to do this if you have been able to go through all this and do all this i know that nothing will bring to you you will just will create it you will do this yeah, you know and that's kind of encouraging yes. not striking at the fact that there are sometimes we will be down, you know, when we are not, when we are ungrateful. You know, sometimes when I'm like that, I'll be like, yeah, just ungrateful. This one that you're even able to achieve, so I want to be close to it, but you're looking at the big ones that you have not been able to do. Ah, I really want to be here. I want to do this. I want to do that. Not appreciating the fact that God has even helped you to even go through and um, to achieve this, the ones you've achieved. So, um, sometimes when those ungrateful part of us want to come up, we have to shut it down, you know, with, with the, uh, with the uh, ability to be grateful, grateful for that which we have. And since there's a focus that we are looking at, there's a goal on ground, there are laid down strategies on how to get them achieved. We definitely achieve them. But as we strive to achieve them, let us not look down on our own personal development. It's a big issue. It's a very big issue in uh, in that in every area of our lives. Personal. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful contribution. And uh, Madam Esther has been that one of the worst. That... But not okay. She's speaking. I'm with you. I'm listening. Okay. So she has been someone that has always given me a wonderful feedback, even when we started in 2021. And I'm so I'm so happy that she is she's with us now. Keep keep shining, keep um, impacting. I'm so 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 proud of what she's doing, even before we met. She's also someone that is impacting seriously. Overnight, you came to my mind. I'm planning to do something for kids. <laughs> so I was just thinking about her too because she's she's so skilled in training as well that I also used to tap into some of it. So yeah, and she mentioned something important that there are times when it comes. You can see this image. As it's going, it came down a little bit, then it just jumped up again. That is going to be seriously explained when we get to the uh, paid class. Yeah, that is starting next week. So it happens like that. There are times when things just seem that, it's, if you sit down with most of these successful business owners, they will tell you, if I, there was a time my business was suffering seriously, but people did not really believe me. They didn't believe me that I was facing challenges because even at that, we are still able to show up. We still keep on going. We still keep on moving until we are able to cover that track. And that is uh, where resilience work with that group. Like um, I think 2021, I started my year with a very bad business. That was how I started 2021. A contract that went so wrong. You know, when the customer gave us something to print as blue and the person said because she felt that purple looks beautiful not realizing the person's logo is like i tell you to print fashion powerhouse for me you forgotten that fashion powerhouse is just red and black and white then you are now giving me orange and green so i had to refund 100% refund, not 10%. I refunded 
even their materials, the printing costs, everything I had to do fresh production for them. So, but then I was still shining. <laughs> but people don't know because it was a major dent in my income, January, 2021. I was paying debt. I paid that debt to myself for like two months. So all the income that were coming in, I could not even plan anything. I was working as my income were coming in, I was funding that uh, debt. As it's coming in, I was funding that debt. And it took me two months to fund it. So it's like, let's say someone give me uh, materials to sew at 100,000 naira, and what I'm buying is 10,000 naira. My payment for my staff are like 10,000 naira. Uh, we just remove this important 20,000 naira and just push the 20, 80K to pay. But then, because you are a growing business, you know already that you will overcome that challenge. So it's always happened sometimes like that. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate and I'm so happy that I did not give in to the laziness of not, um, of not, oh, I mean, of not postponing. Yes, I almost postponed because I couldn't sleep well. I was just, I wanted to, I want to complete the slide for the paid class before the class started, not like the last one that I was doing it while the classes were. You can even see them. I have one, two, three, four. Here, you understand. So this one is, is going to have like, um, this, this paid class is going to have, I think, six slides, not four slides, yes. Because the one is two slides, two full detailed slides. The two one slide, the three one slide, two slides, the four is one slide. Business goods is just one full slide. Yeah, so bye. Everybody can go back to their businesses. I wish you the best of the week. And I know that this class will continue to empower us. We continue, Madam, um, the, uh, 